they lived in dread of the days when business took Papa away from home as it had now. She sought the sanctuary of her large dollhouse and sit and lost herself in her doll family. Annabelle's papa had built the dollhouse especially for her, perhaps because he knew she would need it for refuge from her mother's explosive anger. Again, it was tucked into the corner of her bedroom, a large dollhouse of four rooms, two above and two below, large rooms in which a family of dolls live comfortably. Only the papa doll, who wore a top coat and spats like her papa, was too tall to stand up in the house. So it was too tall. Blah, blah, blah. There's always something. Oh, but it was a happy home, and the ceilings of the lower floor of the doll house were too high. But the doll house were high enough that Annabelle could sit there herself, fine china faces, Blah. and rosebud lips. They loved Annabelle and accepted her as their sister, and the papa loved her too, and the mama, of course. C'est pas la bonne page. It's not the good page. Annabelle, I tried to tell him to keep away, to go outside and play when Papa was gone. But though Zachary was two years older than himself, almost ten years old even, he seemed unable to remember her warning. Sometimes your mama was nice and loving. And Zachary enjoyed her hug so much that he forgot. But now, Papa was gone. And Annabelle knew by the look on her face, the set of her mouth, and the madness in her eyes, that it was going to be a bad time. And now the baby in her crib in the nursery was adding a cry in the sounds gather and amidst it all came another cry, almost a scream, but this of terrible anger from the mother. Stop crying, stop crying, baby sister. Quickly, stop before she reaches you. The mother's screams of anger continued and grew louder as the baby's crying changed from fear to helpless terror. Then, there was a loud thump against the floor, a cracking sound that made the floor beneath Annabelle tremble. Only the screams of Zachary continued. And even though she suddenly... A deadly silence fear. And the his rang with it. He comes at it. He comes at it. Echo. Echo. Echoes of the screams of her real life brother and sister that way. They left very quietly in the doll house. He heard a rock. And heard a rock. A little crack quietly into the doll house. And heard a little rock on the corner. Uh -huh. Large. Oh. And my daughter was here. She couldn't have her face around it. But I read the dog. Chris says we're coming down the hall. Sound. That's her. Baba. And I always say, You listen to what you say. Baba is in the kitchen. Baking food for chickens. And making corn and hooding. And when the witch knocks on the front door, you will take your walking sticks and go to the food step going faster and faster. I then turned to Edwin, and the riding horse was calling, son of him. You are seated from each for the last time. Go out, go out there. The end reaching together, and I don't realize there was no door I closed against because there was no door. No door. 
Anh nợ xíu đó